National Industries uh, originally started as a spring manufacturer, so it was National Springs. And then over time, the spring division um, reduced in, in size, and we started taking on metalwork, so bending and forming, and metal pressing up to 200 tonne, and the metal bending and all that started to take off. So then we started to increase capacity on pressings and so forth, up to 300 tonne. And um, about eight years ago, we decided out of the blue to go into laser cutting. In Australia, the market really, there was no big volumes anymore like the millions or hundreds of thousands. It was customers were buying smaller quantities. So instead of say 500 parts or a thousand parts, so it didn't lend itself to make a die and press the parts anymore. So the laser came into its, its glory because we could laser cut a blank and just make a small tool to form. So by doing that, we actually grew the business. So with the service we got with, from GWB with the Orion and all the help that they gave us to get into laser cutting, we, we stayed with them because we had that, that, that you know, history. So we ended up buying a Sirius, which is a four kilowatt machine. So that was installed within two weeks. You know, initially we didn't have it working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but over a period of maybe six, seven months, it was fully loaded. About two years ago, we decided to try something a little bit different and get into turret punching because it was a lot faster to do the, some products on the laser and it, it would free up the laser to take on more work as well. So the turret punch we put in place, which doesn't only punch, it can tap the holes and it, we can also fold. We can actually do bending on it. So we've got parts now that used to take three weeks to make with three people constantly working on it. That now takes a day on the turret and nobody running it, it just runs by itself. Initially, again, it was a learning curve because we've been used to pressing tools, but not turret punching. So there was a bit of a learning curve there. But again, GWB and LVD, they, they helped us through that. Now we found, uh, after a couple of years, we decided that um, there was new technology with the fibre lasers. We were all CO2. So we thought we'd go for an Electra, 10 kilowatt. So we got that from the show again. So that was installed and that was pretty much installed and up and running within a week. Um, two guys from LVD came out and did the full install. I'd say within a week it was up and running and the speeds that that thing is giving us. And it's got the tower on it, 10 stack tower. We run that 24 hours a day and we're actually exceeding, we're running out of work for it. So now we've got to feed the machine. <laughs> so now it's a matter of getting out and actually getting more work in for the machine to, to, to fulfill it. And next step would be to automate the bending, which um, we saw LVD's Dynacell in, in um, Europe Lake last year. So we ordered the machine. Doing that, it'll actually take operators out of the bending process. So we can put a job list in the machine, load it up in the afternoon from the laser cutting blanks and come back in the morning and the robot will actually bend all the parts and stack them onto the pallets and then it can go out to either the coders or the customer direct. I think we've got a good LVD showroom downstairs. <laughs> so we've stuck with them and they've stuck by us and GWB has stuck by us all the way through from conception with the Orion to now the Electra and the Dynacell now. Um, we wouldn't go anywhere else. <laughs>